As if he's not busy enough already, Craig Revel Horwood started his career as a dancer in Melbourne. He's worked on La Cage Foi, Me and My Girl, West Side Story. He's written, starred in and performed in a bunch of West End shows, choreographed a load of them as well. And of course, he's our Strictly Judge here on the BBC. He's got his brand new book out, so we're going to have a quick chat with him now before it all kicks off. Good afternoon, Craig Revel Horwood. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Andy. Gorgeous, in fact. Yes. You're gorgeous. You're blooming lovely. Yes. Right. I went into two different accents and I don't know what I was doing. Right. Let's get right into it. <laughs> Dances and Dreams on Diamond Street. Let's have a chat about that. That's um, like, what a great title. Oh, well, thank you. It's based actually on uh, true stories that happened uh, while I was living in a house chair with loads of other people in Camden Town. And I set it specifically in 1994, only because that for me was a huge sort of turning point in my life where I was at a crossroads as a dancer, having to hang up my dance shoes and become, of course, a director choreographer. And people might think that that's an easy transition, but it isn't. It's a complete change of job, you know, and um, a quite a difficult one. So I've sort of left this character, Danny Hall, in the book as the lead all the way through it, you know, as, as the glue, if you like, with all the uh, goings on and shenanigans, of course, of living in the middle of the 90s in London, in Camden Town. Of course, I've uh, invented the name Diamond Street, but it was actually... Uh, a street called Pratt Street, and that didn't sound like a good title for a book. <laughs> Dances and Dreams on Pratt Street. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't Pratt have, Street. <laughs> don't have quite the same ring, does it? Didn't, so <laughs> didn't have the same ring. <laughs> oh. um, but, you know, it did ta- teach me a lot, and they become, became really, really good friends of mine. And I just wanted to write, you know, all of these wonderful stories down. And then, of course, amalgamated a lot of characters and then came up with five, you know, um, brand new characters that could uh, tell these stories. And it was just wonderful to do. And it's so different to doing an autobiography. Obviously, I've done three of those. And it was so nice to have, you know, just have fiction so you could be really creative. And especially in lockdown, you know, it was a a godsend. If only for the front cover, it's an amazing book, which I never normally say, but what an eye-catching front cover you've got. But that will stand right out in the bookshops. (laughs) I hope so. (laughs) (laughs) We do want to sell it, darling. But more to the point, I want people to read it, you know, particularly if you're a dancer and thinking coming to London, you know, it's, there's some valuable information in there as well, you know, based on true stories, but still um, fictitious, obviously, in that way. But mm. what a dream it was to um, to have that experience. You know, I was certainly glad to get out of there after five years, I've got to be honest, yeah. and buy my first home. And um, that was a means to an end, like most people go through. But they're just really lovely characters to get to know and it's also romantic you know and yeah. funny heartwarming and all of that but it is slightly offbeat i have to admit are the characters and is the lead character sort of you then or just bits of you or bits of people you've met over your career it's it's pretty much me with amalgamation of other people but mainly danny hall is the main character in it but then uh he's sort of in charge of people moving into the house so that's how he becomes, you know, the patriarch, I suppose, of the entire piece. And, uh, and you know, he's getting young dancers in who are just starting out in London, of course, who have just come off cruise ships and all of that stuff, who think they're in love and not in love, and then someone <laughs> sleeps with that wrong person. I mean, it just get, it goes on and on, you know, with, like real life in that way. But, uh, but you do learn something from it, and uh, it's, a, it's about learning to live with other people and respecting them, I think, is more to the point. And you've, because of such a varied career of, you know, dancer, TV judge, choreographer, writer, you've probably got enough stories and and characters in your life that you could probably go on and write novel after novel because you must meet such interesting characters. Yes, I've had a Shea Lange put in, darling, so I could uh, <laughs> be like Barbara Cartland and just be spouting in my old age, <laughs> oh. recording everything, every every thought, and then getting it into a novel. But I think that's the great thing about fiction. It's creative, and it gives you an escape route, you know, and it was just wonderful when lockdown occurred because I lost all my work because I had so many theatre jobs lined up. My All Balls and Glitter tour, that's been postponed until the 20th of February next year. Yep. I was strictly ballroom. The musical was meant to be on in September. That's gone until next year. 
<clears throat> so it's been uh, frightening, really. I'm just so pleased the BBC have managed to get uh, Strictly back on. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. Do you have any any sort of thoughts, or you? Well, obviously, we all know the lineup and everything. Have you got any sort of who's going to win that? Got any ideas? Who's who's a cut above the rest? Bill Bailey, darling. Bill, Bill Bailey. Bill Bailey, all the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I love his comedy. I love his musicianship. I think you know, as a musician, he's going to have rhythm. So yeah. I'm, I think he's going to surprise everyone. I think everyone thinks that, you know, he's probably in there as the joke one, but I don't think that's going to be the case in any way, shape or form. Caroline Quentin, I'm very much looking forward to. Of course, welcome, welcome back Jamie Lang, yeah. of course, who injured himself last year. That's and right. Nicola Adams, the pairing. So that's going to be really cool. I can't wait for that as well. So there's lots to look forward to. It gives us hope. You know, uh, and a bit of security, actually, yeah. until Christmas, because that's always, a, a, you know, you want a bit of normality at this point in time, you know, which every day or every week, you know, um, things are changing, like Scotland completely going into closing the bars and pubs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's uh, really frightening. And it's nice to give someone some solid entertainment that's able to go on, which is incredible. So I thank the BBC for really pulling the stops out to find a way to do it. So, we'd be, um, um, we'd be flogging your them. book. We'd be bringing your book and saying, here we are, discount copies for everyone here. No. <laughs> no discounts. No discounts. No discounts, darling. No. <laughs> Craig Revel Hallwood. I need to pay my mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Revel Hallwood, Dances and Dreams on Diamond Street. It's a great read. Thank you so much for your time. Have a, have a wonderful winter. You too, my gorgeous. Bye. Bye-bye.